Anthony Joshua uh, just came out and said, uh, listen, he, he put out a tweet that he showed a tweet that you had tweeted because um, you had tweeted uh, when the fight was a draw, I told you that I would give you a rematch. Oh, You're talking about Fury. Oh, you man. know. Hey, hey, you hey, know Brian, Brian, yes. Brian, I'm going to cut you off. I already know you don't <laughs> and the thing about it, man, I don't even have to waste no energy on that, man. They still trying to save face. Yeah, to, you still to, still, yeah he's still trying to save face. I understand. You still trying to save face. We know what happened. I don't, I, bro, I don't have to lie in this sport. Yeah, it could. We could have fought, but you ran. We could have fought, but the zone deal was fucked up. They, the zone even came out themselves and apologized and said they messed up in the deal. Of course, now you want to save face because y'all still hurt. Y'all still think about them 50 million. You still think about you ran. Because even even I heard Hearns even came out and said they had no intentions of fighting me. Period. You already, he already admitted he had no intentions of fighting me because I'm too dangerous of a heavyweight in this fight. Does everybody say that? Why is too dangerous? They don't even think I'm coming back because they say I'm too dangerous. Nobody's going to want to fight him. <laughs> You feel me? So if you already saying that, why you come back? And I, you know, it's crazy. It's it, they still trying to save face, and I'm gonna keep it like that. I ain't, you know, that's the only energy that I'm gonna spread on that. It's funny, it's funny. This ain't even about you. Just because your name were old, you know, man. Man, nobody know why they ain't scared of nobody. If anybody, why well, was the only person trying to fight everybody? If that's so, why the hell I'm gonna be scared of you and run for you but fight Ortiz? When Ortiz was a mandatory, and you guys lied to this man, deceived this man, contradiction after contradiction for this man, he can tell you that himself. You ain't got to get it from me if nobody believes me. You can tell it from yourself. And they still didn't get this man the opportunity. How you become a mandatory when you still didn't get the fight? But I fought him, and you still ain't fought him. So I don't. The proof is in the pudding, man. These guys come out and try to save faith. These UK guys, they, they ain't trying to fight nobody for real. They all they want to do is cheat, cheat, manipulate the fans into thinking that it's more than what it is. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and that's that's all I got to say about that. Uh, a lot of decaps come to my video and always bring up, oh, Deontay Wilder turned down an Anthony Joshua fight before Tyson Fury rematch. Right. And they try to use that against Wilder, claiming that, hey, you know, even Anthony Joshua came out and said the truth will always come out. And he said that I didn't avoid Deontay Wilder. I was trying to fight him before the Tyson Fury rematch. But right. let's really talk about it. Let's really talk about it. Because, you know, Wilder obviously is not going to give this energy right now because he got bigger concerns to worry about. If we really pay attention to what took place, I'm going to break down the timeline in a few. But if you avoided a particular fight at a certain point, and then you want to fight him later on down the line, you still avoided him at some point. You know what I mean? It's equivalent to that Keith Thurman situation. We all know Keith Thurman avoided Errol Spence. That was clear as day. He was saying, I'm cool with being the second best. He will say anything and everything except less fight when it came to Errol Spence. On the other hand, Errol Spence will tell him, I want this fight as bad as I want to breathe, right? And if you look at today, Keith Thurman is begging for that fight. Keith Thurman said, that Errol Spence is going to have to face him or move up from 147 because you know, they can't be both in the same division. He got to come see him. You know what I mean? This is what Keith Thurman said. You see the yep. change of energy as soon as the O went out of the window. And the same thing took place with yep. Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua in 2017, out of his own mouth, he said that Wilder fight is not going to happen till 2020 or 2021. This is out of Anthony Joshua mouth when he was asked about Deontay Wilder. So when Deontay Wilder started applying pressure, that's when a bunch of excuses came along. But like I said, Anthony Joshua now in 2020, after he lost to Ruiz, a fight that was pretty much equivalent to a Buster Douglas upset, his O went out of the window. Now he won the Wilder fight. But when does he want it is the million dollar question before Tyson Fury rematch. Hold on. The timing is wrong because Wilder was supposed to fight Tyson Fury. He promised Tyson Fury a rematch. And Wilder is a man of his word. You know what I mean? Now, think about it this way. A lot of people claim Tyson Fury beat Deontay Wilder. 
So Deontay Wilder really wanted to get his hands on Tyson Fury to prove that he could knock out Tyson Fury because they were claiming Wilder was going to avoid him. Remember that? They were saying that, oh, Wilder's going to avoid a Fury rematch. Even Andre Ward, Andre Ward felt like it's a stylistically bad matchup for Deontay Wilder. So he was like, yeah, I don't see Deontay Wilder wanting to get in the ring with Tyson Fury again. Mr. Mechanical, Keith Runtime Thurman. Just like Keith Thurman, you know, AJ was in the same predicament. He did the same thing. And like I said before, when Wilder was about to fight Tyson Fury the second time, a lot of people was favoring Tyson Fury to win. A lot of people said Tyson Fury beat Wilder the first time. Coming off two year of um, suspension for taking steroids, but they flipped the story to depression. The old media kept saying he won 10 rounds. It was a robbery, all that. You know, now that Wilder want to fight him, you guys claiming he ducking Anthony Joshua? What sense does that make? Which you got to think about it this way. Prior to us finding out Tyson Fury cheated, he was the man that supposedly beat the man that beat the man. He beat Klitschko. Mm -hmm. So if it wasn't for Tyson Fury beating Klitschko, Anthony Joshua wouldn't even be a champion right now. And Anthony Joshua at the time, he was coming off a victory, avenging his loss to Ruiz. Meanwhile, Tyson Fury, he was more valuable to Wilder because they had a fight in which it was close. So he wanted to get that chapter closed before taking the Anthony Joshua fight. He had unfinished business. It's the same thing with Floyd Mayweather and Maidana. When Maidana fought Floyd Mayweather for the first time, everybody said, oh, Maidana, oh, he got robbed. He got robbed. He got robbed. Everybody screamed robbery. As soon as Floyd Mayweather fought Maidana in a rematch, now everybody's screaming cherry pick. When Floyd Mayweather fought Castillo, everybody was like, oh, it's a robbery. It's a robbery. As soon as Floyd Mayweather fought Castillo again, it's a cherry pick. <laughs> what? You can't have it both ways. You can't claim that God beat him is a robbery and then say it's a cherry pick. When this guy's supposed to be the lineal champion of the world prior to us finding out he cheated by tampering with his gloves. So when it comes to the Anthony Joshua situation, like I said, the timing of it all, it was all wrong. How are you going to send somebody a fight when they have a fight coming up against a big name? It's one thing if he offered him a fight before the Brazil fight. But to offer him a fight before the Tyson Fury rematch, which was on pay-per-view, it was uh, the biggest fight in 2020. Why would you send him a fight mm -hmm. then? Like the timing of it all, it don't look right. Just like the Ortiz situation. Remember, uh, Anthony Joshua promised Luis Ortiz a fight. He told Luis Ortiz, listen, let me fight for the WBA vacant title against Klitschko. And if you allow me to do that, then I'm going to fight you right after. However, he did not keep his promise. and. He didn't fight Luis Ortiz right after. Luis Ortiz, at the time, he was signed with Matchroom, and Eddie Hearn had to let him out of his contract. So the point that I'm trying to make, he even avoided Ortiz, and Wilder had to clean that mess up. But ironically, when Ortiz signed the fight against Deontay Wilder for a rematch, at the time, he got paid $7 million. He signed a deal to fight Wilder a second time in a rematch right after Brazil. Guess what Eddie Hearn does? He sends Ortiz an offer. What'd he do? He sent he sent Ortiz an offer. When he got a fight lined up against Wilder for seven million, he sent Ortiz an offer for seven million. Hold on. Wow. But but that's a Wilder opponent right now. He, he about to fight him on pay-per-view in a rematch. You know what I'm saying? Like they always playing politics, they always put playing smart. And I could see between the lines. So if we go back to the time, like I said, facts remain on top of opinions any given day of the week. Facts over emotion. If you recall, Anthony Joshua was on camera claiming, give me 50 million, 50-50 split, and I take the fight, you know, with Wilder. I, I signed the contract today. Guess yep. what Wilder does? He wired to him the next day. He gave him that same deal, 50 million plus 50-50 split, right? About to catch this plane in a few minutes, but Anthony, you know, with your man Eddie and Barry Hearn and tell them to check their email. I got something special for you. And by the way, all the money's in the bag. So I expect you'll be a man of your word. Okay. I'll take 50 million up front. If that's the case, Wilder's team, bring me 50 million up front and we'll take the fight. I'll see you soon then. Now, the I kind of heart he has, he honored his word. He honored his word. And Wilder sent it to him the next day. Guess what Anthony Joshua does? He didn't make none of these excuses the decaps are making. He said, 
I don't want to fight in the United States. I don't want to go to the United States. I'm the A side. He need to come fight me in the UK. Wilder said, well, listen, I can't, I can't give you this type of money and fight you in the UK because we getting this money from the United States. So you got to come to the United States, the Mecca of boxing, right? Yeah, when it could have taken place, Anthony Joshua said, nah, absolutely no. And then Eddie Hearn, to save face, he sent Wilder a $12 million flat offer, which is a, a low ball offer to say the least. That's like 12%. And the reason why I say low ball offer, because remember, when Anthony Joshua fought Parker, who would you say is a bigger star, a bigger name, Parker or Deontay Wilder? <laughs> Who? Deontay Wilder. Of course, right? Now, why would you offer yeah. Parker 33% of the purse, but offer Deontay Wilder 12%? Well, hold on. That don't make no sense Boxing at all. Skill. That's what I'm saying. It don't make Boxing no sense. Boxing skill and publicity. That's what I'm saying. It don't make no sense at all. Then he ended up improving the offer to 15 million, which is 15%. Guess what Wilder does? Being the warrior he is, he took the offer. He was like, you know what? It's going to pay off. He took the offer and signed it and went on live and said on Instagram, I reported on it. He was like, Eddie Hearn, Anthony Joshua, we sent the contract. Make sure you guys sign it because Eddie Hearn gave him a week time span. Wilder signed it like the next day. Nah, baby, you don't see no fear in my eyes. I ain't scared of no man. There's no man I'm afraid of ever on this earth. I wasn't raised like that. I wasn't born like that. It wasn't applied in my heart, baby. This is what I do. No man can ever say he looked into my eyes and seen fear because fear don't exist there. It's no home for fear in my heart. The things I have been through, the shit I had to go through, fear don't exist in my heart. You better ask about me. <laughs> That's it, guys. You better ask about me. And then guess what Eddie Hearn does? He paid the WBO to mandate Povetkin, a guy that took steroids his last fight against Stavern and ended up fighting a replacement opponent because Stavern wouldn't fight him. I mean, Eddie Hearn, I don't know, like the WBO out of nowhere mandated Povetkin. And they said Anthony Joshua got 48 hours to negotiate a deal or he will get stripped out of his belt. Hold on, man. That don't happen. That don't happen like that in 48 hours. Nah, nah, that, you know that's what I mean? Bogus. Yeah, in 48 hours, all of a sudden, now the WBO demanding the fight. And if he doesn't, he will get stripped. And in 48 hours, the fight didn't get made with Pivekin. It took a couple weeks. So I was like, hold on. You know what I mean? You see the games they playing. When Wilder accepted a low ball yeah. offer, Anthony Joshua turned it down. He sent Deontay Wilder a low ball offer in which he turned it down afterwards. He asked for $50 million, He turned it down. So all I'm saying is Keith Thurman is a perfect example with Errol Spence. Just to prove to the world. And facts is over emotion. Like I said... Deontay Wilder, the Tyson Fury fight at the time was more important to him because if he would have beat Tyson Fury, he'd be the A side against Anthony Joshua in negotiations. And he already had that fight lined up against Tyson Fury. He was telling the world he was about to fight him for the mm -hmm. second time. You know what I mean? So uh, I just wanted to say that to clear everything up when it came to the situation with Wilder and, and AJ because, you, you know, like I said, old media will do anything and everything to deflect. They will ask Anthony Joshua. And they're still doing it. Yeah, and they will ask Anthony Joshua about Wilder turning down an offer instead of focusing on Tyson Fury not honoring his rematch clause and cheating. How are you going to ask Anthony Joshua about an offer and not ask uh, Anthony Joshua about Tyson Fury cheating? When Anthony Joshua already know about this story, Nicholas Asbury, the sparring partner that busted Tyson Fury cheating and sparring, he said that Anthony Joshua is well aware of Tyson Fury cheating, even in sparring, because his own fighter that he signed was there, and he called Anthony Joshua on the phone, and he was there, and he heard the whole conversation. So AJ is well aware of everything. But they won't ask AJ the million-dollar question. However, they're going to ask him something irrelevant that we already know. It was just done to save face, just to point out what old media is all about. That's why new media is all about the whole absolute truth. And our key always put it together like puzzle. Like I showed Lawrence O'Coley and like, he's like, oh, I'm getting on the phone talking with um, uh, Anthony Joshua. Now, let me mind you, if you think wow. the great, if you think the great Anthony Joshua knows about this shit, because Lawrence O'Coley is managed by Anthony Joshua and he called him right in front of me. And then wow. Anthony Joshua knows about this shit, but he ain't saying shit, but him and Tyson Fury are getting ready to fight a two fight deal. So I guess Tyson Fury's wow. just coming over to the U.S. and just fucking people up. You know what I'm saying?
This fucking fighter is up. Turn it. Hold it. You're not that pretty. I'm a bad man. I took up the world. I took up the world. I took up the world. Witness there's only one God, Allah, and Muhammad is his final messenger. That's why I said, Larry, on the bungle fight, thanking you. They call me the problem, but you could call me the can man because anybody can get it. Africans, Americans, Dominicans, Mexicans, anybody can get it.